So, what's up guys, my name's RJ and welcome back to the channel today. I'm going to be doing the postscript tag, I think that's what it's called, again. I do this all the time in tags, I do tags and I never remember the names of them. So, I'm going to go check if that is the name for it. I know postscript is in the, is in the thing, so I don't know if that's just it. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just called the Postscript Book Tag. <laughs> um, I was tagged by my guy Scott, the bald book tripper, so I'm very excited to do this one. Um, I've seen this one going about, I've seen Madison do it, and I've seen uh, Josh from Red Fury Books, he's done it. Um, so I'm excited to do this, so um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, so, uh, uh, question one, the longest book you've read this year and the book that took you the longest to finish? Um, I think the longest book... I think it was Speaking Bones. I think Speaking Bones was the longest. If I'm going by... In terms of page count... Uh, yeah, I think it's Speaking Bones. I think it was the longest book I've read this year. Uh, the book that took me the longest to finish, that would have been Grace of Kings. Um, I believe that took me almost two months. I think it was like six weeks or something that it took me to finish that. And it's not even that long. I think it's like 600 pages maybe. I don't know why that took me six weeks to read. I think I was just um, bouncing on and off it. Even though even though I did really, really enjoy it. Um, it was a book I was definitely taking my time with. Not on purpose, just how it how it happened. But yes, yeah, so I would say Speaking Bones, uh, the longest book I've read, and then the book that took me the longest. I would say, yeah, it's Grace of Kings. Um, uh, number two, a book you read, a book you read this year, uh, was outside your comfort zone. Um, I would say, I would definitely say Three Body Problem by by Cixin Liu. I'd say that was definitely out of my comfort zone. Um I don't know if there'd be there's there'd be a few a few others maybe that I DNF'd if that counts. Um I suppose I didn't technically read them. I didn't finish them, obviously. That's that's kinda what DNF means. Um I would say something like Perdido. I tried to read Perdido Street Station by uh, China Mayville, and that just did not work at all. <laughs> I do want to give it a go again, but that was definitely absolutely not. <laughs> so, um, also, um, Hardboiled Wonderland, The End of the World by Haruki Murakami, that was definitely one that was outside the comfort zone, but um, yeah, I would have to say Three Body Problem for as my official answer because that was because I love that one um, and it really did work um, number three how many books did you reread um, I read I reread one same as same as uh, the year before that same as in 2021 I reread one book in 2022 I reread one and that was the shadow of what was lost by uh, James Islington because I was determined to finish Lycanius and then I fell off it at the exact same point. Not because I hate it, just because reasons. Um, so. Oh, and that kind of answers um, prompt number four, favourite reread of this year. It's uh, It has to be The Shadow of What Was Lost because that's the only one. Uh, question number five, a book you read for the first time that you're that you look forward to rereading. Um, I'll go with the Dark Tower one, and I would actually say like Song of Susanna. I'm very much looking forward to rereading that again because I I love that book. That book is so good. Um, uh, number six, a favorite single short story or novella that you read this year. Uh, that's easy. It's Queen of Mid Ashes by uh, Christopher Rocchio. Looking back on that top ten, like I look at Howling Dark, and I think Queen of Mid Ashes could have made it as well. Like. Those two books are so neck and neck for me in terms of my favourite, like, sunnier um, 
which is amazing because Queen of Mid Ashes is like less than two hundred pages. I think I think it's around a hundred. It's, it's around the hundred two hundred page mark. It's definitely under. It's definitely under two hundred. Um, and Howling Dark is close to like seven hundred. So it shows how good Queen of Mid Ashes was. So I would definitely have to say that. Um, I think that was the only novella I read this year. I don't read small books, clearly. Uh, number seven, Mass Appeal, a book you liked and would recommend to a wide variety of readers. Again, this is a tough. This is a tough one because I don't think I read anything that was really good this year that would I would consider giving to a wide variety. Like definitely not any of the favorites like dandelion is very specific remembrance is very i would recommend for a very specific audience uh, i think out of all the books i've read this is the one that i liked that i think i could recommend to basically anyone um because i don't think it's that difficult to read it's not you know it's not that challenging i don't think but it's nice fun fantasy if you like dragons and that's a Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. Um, I, I did like this one. I didn't love it. Um, I'm starting to gain a bit of interest in reading book two. I would like to get um, I would like to get book two in uh, very soon. I think there are five books out and they're all I think they all they're all have their self-contained story so you can you know you can jump in whenever you want. You don't have to read them I think particularly close there is an overarching story to it but you know kind of the end of it but um natural history of dragons is it was it was fun like it was it was a nice read um if you're a big fan of dragons um dragons are a very big part of the series so yeah and there's a and there's also a very very good female protagonist so yeah so that's what i would say if if you're talking about mass appeal i'd say that would be one that I'd recommend. Um, number eight, a specialized appeal, a book you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just anyone. That's a lot easier and that's the darkness that comes before. If you're into action, well, if you have a hard time with sort of a more literary kind of prose or you don't like that kind of thing, uh, darkness that comes before I'd say would be hard to get into. The world is incredibly, incredibly bleak. Um, probably the bleakest world that I've read. It's it looks it's even more bleak than from the fifth season, and that's. I didn't think you could get much bleaker than that, but apparently you can. And also, again, like Aspect Ember apparently gets even bleaker. Um, and that's what I'm reading at the moment, and, um. If I say any more about it, this will turn into a 15 minute rant about how good Aspect, Aspect Emperor is. And I don't want to have to edit that out, so, um, so I'm not going to say any more. Um, but yeah, so number eight, I would say Darkness Comes Before. And then number nine, reflect on your year as a bookish content creator, goals met, good slash bad memories, favourite videos you've made, etc. Um... I guess I'll talk about some of these goals met. Um, I have like, like I've never set goals really for the channel. Um, I don't have any like lifetime goals or anything like that. Like I have goals that like I would like to achieve if that's possible. Um, like, for example, like towards the summer of this year, I had like. Uh, this year, like, I've had some really big growth, um, like, this time last year, I think, it was on less than 100 subs, and I think, and if you check now, I think it's, like, 340, which is insane, like, I thought this channel, when I started the channel, I genuinely thought the channel would peak at maybe 250, maybe, if I was, if I was lucky, 200, 250, um, but it's hit 340, I'm extremely happy with that. Everything after this is just gravy. Um, I love 
as, as long as people keep watching the videos, I'll keep making them, regardless of how many people watch them. Um, as long as I find this fun, as long as uh, people are interested, I'll keep doing this. Um, I want to try and get consistent. Um, I did say that last year, <laughs> that I wanted to get consistent. I kind of did for a while, but then it just kind of fell off. Um, so I don't want to make any promises that I can't keep. So I'm going to try and keep consistent, keep that a video a week kind of thing. I want to keep that going, um, but we'll see. Again, we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, life happened this year, especially towards the last six months of the year. It was rough, but um, I feel like uh, the next... Like, I'm feeling good about the next six months or so, um, at least. Like, from what I can see, it's looking good, at least. Obviously, shit can happen, but um, at least the immediate future is looking, you know, somewhat stable so I'm glad about that um, um, and the number 10 tag some fellow bookish content creators um, I did the same with the last tag um, if you haven't done this um, just gonna tag uh, consider yourself tagged um, but yeah so I uh, thank you guys so much for watching this um, as always like and subscribe if you enjoyed it um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Slam.